Hi, this is Lee Garrett and welcome to another edition of Screencast Online. Long-time members will know that I've got a genuine passion for consuming music and I've covered several different music players during my time here at Screencast Online. Now, one of the biggest apps on iOS and iPadOS for playing Apple Music content is Marvis Pro. And I've always been reluctant to go there because, well, it's just so big. You can do so much with it, like create your own smart lists, completely redesign the display by showing custom metadata. You can create your own groups and filters. When all I want to do really is just open up an app and play some music. However, I did decide to take the plunge and I don't regret it for a second. Yes, it's big and it's certainly complicated. However, I'm really hoping this video will show you that it's only big because it's comprised of so many building blocks that are all the same and you only need to build as many as you need. This is truly the Lego equivalent of an app. Now I'm gonna run through today the basics of how to set it up. However, please remember as I go through this, you don't need to enable everything or change everything. Just start off slow. If there's something specific you wanna do, the Apple Music can't, the chances are you can do it within Marvis. So let's see it. Okay, I have Marvis installed on here. Let me just show you it on the App Store, I'll tap. And this is what it looks like. You can't see the price because I've already purchased it. It's $10, so it's certainly not the cheapest app out there. But for me, it does represent value because I really don't like the Apple Music app. But you have to make a judgment call on the value you'd get from it yourself. And the reviews are great. Power users absolutely love it. But you don't need to be a power user to get value from it. And let's see for ourselves. I'm going to tap open. And of course, Marvis needs to access your Apple Music library. So I'll give it access. And it doesn't take long to sync with my library and populate the default groups that we have. Now there's many ways that I could have outlined this video because of the depth that it goes into. It would be easy to start off with the wrong elements and end up tying ourselves up in a knot. So I've decided to do a very quick overview of the interface first and then work from the inside out. So that'll be actually searching for and looking at songs and albums, what we can do with them at the item level, and then we'll scale out slowly to look at music player options and then start looking at the real customization options, building block by building block. So let's cover the interface first. And yes, you could be forgiven. It looks a lot like Apple Music, because it certainly does. We've got a sidebar on the left. We've got our main display pane on the right. We can hide the sidebar here. And there are three main groups by default in the sidebar. The top one has a search option tab. We've got a homepage tab that is fully customizable and a settings tab. And yep, these are all called tabs, which is very important. Then below that, your Apple Music library is in a collapsible group. And beneath that, we have all of your playlists. Now up in the top right, we have an ellipses button and this allows you to edit what appears in your sidebar. So if I tap on edit, you'll see that we can move these tabs around to reorder them. And we also have buttons in each section to add a new tab. And we're going to look at doing that later. Of course, it could be confusing if we start trying to do that now. And if I scroll down, we can't make any edits to the playlist section and at the bottom you can add a new group in here. Now this group can be a tab group like the ones that we've seen above or it could be a group of playlists. So I'm going to select tab group and you can give it a name but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole just yet though. We're going to be creating a demo group and adding tabs to that later so I'll just cancel. And the group has still appeared even though I haven't given it a name. It's called tab group but I'll delete that shortly and I'll tap done up here then tap the ellipses here once more. This time I'm going to choose the manage groups section and this is where you can reorder or delete the groups from one interface. So I'll just delete that new one that we created there. Over to the main window now and we're in the home tab which by default has three sections in there. We've got the recently played songs section which of course shows the most recent songs that have been played and we can change that filter if we like on how many days we regard as being recent. We could set it to just show those in the last two weeks if we like or maybe the last two days. Again all of those goodies are all to come. And then below that, we have my recently added albums and playlists. And I should say here, this isn't a demo iPad. I've just rebuilt it with the iOS 17 beta on my own account. So this is my actual Apple Music library. So please don't roast it too much. Then at the bottom, we have a section for the most played songs. And you'll see there is metadata displayed on the right telling you how many times those songs have been played. Now, in the same way that you can manage the sidebar, you can manage how this home tab looks. You can reorder the sections. You can rename the home tab. I'm going to tap on main here, give it a new name. And this is a good example of what I would call a building block here because you'll see this several times within this screencast. 